Hello everyone, it's going to make a short video on Unit 1, Section 4. Uh, this is mainly going to be about percents. Most of the homework problems on Unit 1, Homework 4 are dealing with applications with percentages. Alright, so this is a handout that we'll get in class. All right, we're going to work through a couple of these in OneNote. And what we want to do at the beginning here is make this generalization for how we take a given quantity and either increase it by a fixed percentage and or or decrease it by a fixed percentage. All right, we can do that with one multiplication as we're going to see. All right, so what we like to do here is work through some of these examples and again we're going to then make the generalization after we do so. All right, so it's saying in this first example a plot of land is going to be marked up 15%. If the current price is $12,000 for that plot of land, what will the marked up price be? All right, so let's work this out. Now, the way we can think about this, we're going to be using the percentage equation, which is that part is equal percent times whole. All right, so we'll be, we'll be using that. All right, and we want to think about this as being is that the original, we're going to take the original price, and we're going to add on to that our percentage, which is 15% of the original price. And I'm just going to write original for the original price here and that's going to give us the new price. All right, now we're going to substitute our numbers in and we're going to get a numerical answer for these ones and again we're trying to develop a pattern here. So the original amount was $12,000. So substitute in 12,000. Now when we're de whenever we're dealing with percentage we have to multiply. So when we say 15% of the original price, that of right there, stands for multiplication. All right, so really important to not forget that we have to do two things when we're working with a percentage. The first one is to convert your percentage to a decimal. All right, now the way we do that is we write down 15.0, put some zeros in the front if needed, and we're going to divide it by 100, which is equivalent to moving the decimal place one, two places over. So as a decimal number, it's 0.15 or 0 0.15. Alright, so now when we write this down as a decimal, it's going to be 0 0.15 times the original amount, which we know is $12,000. And just to make this shorter, let's let the, let's call, <coughs> excuse me, call the new price to say X. Alright, now we could take a calculator out and do that multiplication, but what I'd like to showcase is that we can do that multiplication and then that addition, but what I want to show is that we can actually do this as a single multiplication and then that should actually make decent sense for us after we get to that. Alright, so this first term in here, we've got a plus sign separating the two terms. The first term we can actually write as 1 times 12,000. Alright, now what we're seeing here is that we have a common factor of 12,000 in both the first term and the second term. All right, what we can do is factor out that 12,000 either to the left or to the right. I'm going to do it to the right. And what we're left with when we do so is we still have that plus sign there. We're left with the 1 that was multiplied by the 12,000 in the first term and then the 0 0.15 which was multiplied by the 12,000 in the second term. All right, so what is this showing us then? To get our new price, we can simply take... I'm going to write this down below here. All right. To get our new price, what we can really do then is take our original amount, the 12,000, and multiply that by 1.15. So if we just do the simple addition, 1 plus 0 0.15, we get 1.15. All right, and then let's do that multiplication. All right, in completing that multiplication with the calculator, you're not expected to do that by hand, what are we seeing that we're going to get a dollar amount of 13800 All right, so that's our answer. Now, again, I'm more concerned about the pattern we're going to see as we do a couple of these examples. I want to focus on this single multiplication for a moment here. If we think about the original amount, I'm just going to draw a rectangle, kind of representing a bin for being the original amount. All right, and that's 100% of what we're starting with. Okay, now what we're trying to do here or in this problem is we want to increase it by 15%. We're marking it up, so we're going to add on 15%. All right, so we've got 100% here of our original amount, and we're going to add on 15%. What's our new total? <clears throat> 
is 15, 115%. All right, so what we really do with that sim single multiplication is to get the, the new amount, we're going to take 115% of the original. Okay, and if you look at the multiplication that we ended up doing, that's exactly what we did. 115% of the original would be converting 115% to a decimal, which would be 1.15 of means multiply so we then take that result and we would multiply that by the 12,000 so we could reverse the multiplication of course and that will give us the same answer all right so we kind of took our time through that first one I might do the next one a little bit quicker here and try to maybe use this picture to get straight at the answer in um, a shorter amount of time here so we could use either that original setup or this kind of modified one so let's look at number three we'll skip over number two all right so for number three it says the rent for Jeffrey's apartment is three hundred dollars per month it's going to be increased by seven point five percent what will he be uh, what will his new payment be all right so again it's going to be increased so we're we talking about a percent increase or decrease in this case it's increasing by seven point five percent so again let's think about this in terms of starting with our original value, which is 100% of the original, we're going to add on 7.5% for a new total here of 107.5%. All right, so to get the new amount, how much the new rent's going to be, we want to take 107.5% of the original rent. All right, so again, to get that result now, we're going to convert 105% to a decimal. And again, we're going to move that decimal place two places to the right. And that's going to give us 1.075. That's 107.5% as a decimal of always means multiply with percentages. The original rent or original cost of the rent, which is $300. And then we just simply compute that with a calculator to get the new rent. And if you do that, you're going to get $322.50. Okay, so let's do a couple more. All the problems are not going to be um, this straightforward. For some of the other ones, we're going to not be given the original amount and we're going to have to find it. All right, but the setup will be done in a similar fashion. All right, so let's take a look at a couple where we're doing a decrease a percent decrease and see how that's going to change then we'll make the generalization all right of what we're coming up with all right but let's just notice in the previous two examples we did a hundred percent plus our mark up for number four this is a mark down because we have a sixty dollar shirt and it's going on sale by twenty five percent so we're decreasing it by twenty five percent so this one is slightly different we want to take our original amount which was representing that one hundred percent we want to reduce that by 25%. We want to cut off 25% of that. What we'll be left with then is 75%. Okay, so again, we're getting that one that 75% by doing 100% minus 25% to give us 75%. All right, so what we're looking for in this problem is 75% of the original amount. All right, now what is that going to be? Again, to compute that, we're going to convert the percentage. Oops, screen jumped on me there. We're going to convert our percentage to a decimal. So move the decimal place over to it's 0.75 times the original price, which is 60. And if you do this multiplication, you'll get 45. All right, so let's just notice the difference there. 100% minus 25%. All right, let's do one more. How about we take a look at number five? This one, again, the price of a home is being reduced by a fixed percentage. So this time, we're going to have, again, our original amount is representing our 100% of what we're starting with. We're going to chop off or reduce that by 12%. So reduce is going to mean subtract for us. So that's going to be 88% is what we're left over with. So for this problem, the reduced price is going to be 88% of the original price plugging those numbers in converting this to a decimal we get 0.88 of the original we're going to multiply by 159,000 
in doing that multiplication, what we end up getting is doing that multiplication, we end up getting 139,920. All right, so that's the new price. All right, so let's make the generalization now and then we try to get to one of the examples which are a little more difficult uh, in that we're not given the original price. So what did we do in the, these last couple? We took, to get the new percentage, we were doing a reduction, so it was 100% minus, in this case, it was 12%. Okay, now, when we think about this, 100% is really the number one, just plain one as a decimal, and we're subtracting our, what I'm going to call little r, which is our percent, in this case, decrease. Now let's scroll back up to the ones where we were doing a percent increase. Let's go back to the first one, for instance. To get that 115%, what we did there was we took 100% plus the 15%, which converting these over into straight numbers, we would get one plus little r, which I'm calling is 15%. So when we increase by a fixed percentage, we're going to multiply by one plus that percentage. When we want to decrease something by a fixed percentage, we're going to multiply by one minus that percentage converted to decimals. And again, the one is standing for 100%. Okay, so let's go to the next page and we're going to make those generalizations. All right, so if we're given an amount, and we're going to call that capital A in both scenarios there, we're going to now decrease it, or sorry, increase it for the first blank. Then what we're going to multiply by is 1 plus R. And again, that 1 is standing for 100% plus whatever R percent is. All right, so 1 plus R means we converted it to a decimal. What is the new amount? That new amount we can found by the single multiplication. Take the original amount, which I'm calling capital A, that quantity, and multiply it by 1 plus R. To decrease by a fixed percentage, we do something similar, but we're going to do 1 minus R. And then we're going to take that original amount and we're going to multiply it by 1 minus r. And again, once again, 1 minus r stands for 100%. And if we're doing a reduction, it's going to be minus r percent. Think about the picture we drew with the rectangles up above. All right, let's do one or two examples where we're utilizing this. Now, these problems are a little bit more challenging because we are not going to be given the original amount. We're going to set up an equation and solve it. So the builder of tracks home reduced the price all right, so it's a reduction by 15%. The new price is 125,000. What was the original price? All right, so that's what we're going to call X. We're going to let X equal the original price. All right, and for this one, let's set this up. It's going to be an equation that we're going to end up solving. All right, but we're not going to be able to just do a straight calculation. All right, right off the bat, we got to set the equation up. It's going to be a linear equation, and then we're going to solve it. So for this one, what's the situation? We're decreasing it by or reducing it by 85%. So this is my value little r. So what we're going to do is 1 minus convert that to a percentage, and that's going to be 0.85. So what we want to know is, or it's 85%. We were going to say 85% of the original price is going to equal the new price. Now putting this to work, 85% we just computed as a decimal is 0.85. The original price we need to multiply by, but we don't know it. We're temporarily calling it x, so we're going to say 0.85 times x. That's going to give us the new price of 125,000, and then we just have to simply solve this linear equation. All right, so to solve that, just rewrite it over here. we are going to need to break up this multiplication between the 0.85 and the x and do the division by 0.85, divide both sides by 0.85, and that will give us our new selling price. All right, I'm going to round this to the nearest cent here. We're going to get $147,058 times, or point, sorry, not times, 0.82. So that's our new selling price. Again, it, it's got to be higher if the new price is 125, that was the original price, excuse me. All right, so that one we found the original price given the new price. That's it for this video.